Hi, my name is Mark Brown with Pony Boy Pop Art. Today we're going to be going over the real hero, otherwise known as Homelander. Homelander is uh, available as a model by the designer Dirty Burger 1338 on Thingiverse. And we're going to be going over how to print him out, paint him, and make him look like this. So follow along and I hope you enjoy. So again, this is a great looking model. Um, obviously a lot of detail went into the hair and the front of the um, of Homelander's outfit. Um, really, there was a couple of supports that I used just to uh, make sure the beaks of the eagles were good and uh, some tree support to get his chin and make sure that that uh, came out fine. I have uh, had to remove those obviously and did just a little bit of sanding on the bottom side of his chin. So what we're gonna do is get this primed up with our handy dandy Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 fillable fi filler and sandable primer. And basically just gonna give him a, a light coat here so we can really see all the details and uh, if there's anything else that we need to sand, otherwise we're gonna get painting. Okay, we're gonna give that about 10, 15 minutes, let it dry, and then uh, we'll see how we're going. At this point, we've got the primer on there and it's uh, went on really well. And everything looks actually quite, uh, quite spectacular on this model. Um, the only thing is, is you can still see some layer lines in the face. And as you saw, we did some of the sanding and there is a little bit still showing here. So I'm just gonna take some fine grip paper and try and smooth some of this out. Now this is one of the great things about that Rust-Oleum fillable sandable primer is that it really does take up to sanding after you've primed and can help get into those layer lines. Um, if you do this within a, just maybe 10, 20 minutes right afterwards, you can actually take your finger and just smooth that out a lot of times. Um, I'm hoping that I've got this at a good enough angle, but you can actually see there's a, a nice sheen and a, even a, a glare coming off of the light here at the right angles. So um, basically I'm just gonna keep doing this on just his face. Everything else is fine enough that I don't care about, uh, well, you don't see any layer lines really. But even if I did, um, you know, like in here, it just kind of ends to the, to the cloth texture, especially as compared to the smooth skin once we get this all smoothed out here. So I'm just gonna keep going on this and I will check back with you in a few minutes. So at this point, you'll notice uh, there's some discoloration because some of it has been uh, smoothed down to see the darker gray of the PLA underneath and some of it's more built up um, where it's uh, the fill uh, the filler primer. So what I'm going to do is actually take this over and spray it one more time just to give it a light coat back over his face and help me see is there anything that still needs to be smoothed out at that point and really will be going over with just my finger this time and verifying that everything is totally smooth at that point ready for us to start painting. Okay, it's been about 10-15 uh, minutes and this is nice and dry. So I'm literally just going to take my thumb here and rub through the areas and just going to help smooth it out a little bit more. Again, trying to go against the grain to really force that primer into the cracks and the more we can make his face gleam. And now we've got smooth skin. So at this point, 
We're going to switch away from his face entirely. As a matter of fact, we're going to tape up his face and um, all this area here. Uh, I'm really basically this whole front, I want to get that blue. And right now, I think the best way to do that is with spray paint. So I'm going to tape it up instead of hand painting it and really just hit him hard with some metallic blue that I think is going to look amazing on him. So let's get to it. So I figured I'd check in. Um, I've been taking a blue painter's tape and basically putting it everywhere on Homelander here that is not going to be blue. So at the end of this, everything had better be blue one way or another. It's either going to be blue because of the spray paint that I'm going to put on, or it's blue because of this painter's tape to protect it from the spray paint. Either way, it will be blue. So one thing to take note, I am taping everything on him. Front, back, sides, undersides. You have to be very specific on tape and make sure that you've got everything down and that you've got all of your seams pressed down. Otherwise, you may end up having a little overspray or if you spray too heavy, you may have a run and that can end up getting under your tape, especially if you've got a seam in there that you didn't press down. So, do not skimp on the tape over. Use more than you need to. Tape is cheap and I assume your time is not. So I'm just going to keep doing this and I will check back with you. All right at this point I think I have, oh let's see there's a little gap right there. You have to look at it from every possible angle because you never know how you're going to pick it up and spray paint it. You may have just had a nice little hole in there. All right, everything here I want to be blue and that is good. I've even taped up the base because I'm going to have that be different. I made sure to get the back of his cape as well as the sides, since I'm going to be spraying from the side here and the side here. So, let's uh, take them over and start getting painting. All right, I've got some uh, blue metallic Rust-Oleum paint here. This is really, really good, especially for the, the color and sheen that we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm just gonna start giving them a couple of quick, easy paints on here. And again, rotating them around to make sure that we've got all the areas. So this will test out your taping. I do want to get the bottom of this. I don't want that to still be gray. That would look kind of gross. Now, look it over and see. Is there anything that is still gray? If so, spray it. If not, leave it alone. All right, we're going to let this sit for about 10-15 minutes and then we'll check back on it and take the tape off. Okay, let's do an unmasking here and see how good of a job we did on our tape. This is kind of like uh, Christmas Day when you open up your presents. Let's see what you got. Hopefully it's not a pair of socks. All right, look at that. Now that is good. 
a couple of little bits where I wasn't perfect on the uh, edges here. But other than that, most of them straight clean lines and full coverage, even the bottom, which is great. So, you know, when someone ends up looking at this, if they're at an off angle, they'll still just see the blue of his uniform here. Obviously, I need to paint this up, but that's part of when I get to painting there. So, I think what we're going to do is go with the Eagles next here, and um, we'll uh, start seeing how we can get this guy to look more like Homelander. All right, I've got just some uh, iridescent antique gold metallic paint here. I usually use golden brand, but really any brand will do. And we're really going to just focus on these eagles here and get them fully painted over. One thing I want to point out is you do want to get the full 3D, so to speak, um, paint of the uh, eagles. So to be clear, these eagles do come up, they are raised, they're made out of solid gold. So if you look at the back of them, you shouldn't see blue, you shouldn't see gray, you should see gold. Now, you'll notice uh, I went over and got a little crazy and uh, got gold onto my blue here. I'm not really worried about that at this point because that's actually right at a crease line where I'm going to weather this up and paint over it a little bit so it'll actually completely disappear. What I'd want to make sure though is, is when I look at it, it is absolutely solid gold and looks every bit of it. So if you get a little extra paint, don't worry. Just make sure that this eagle looks as awesome as it's supposed to. All right, now that we've got the eagles all set, I'm going to, since we've got the gold out here, go ahead and do his collar. And uh, we'll have a whole lot of the body really well set at that point. All right, so now his collar is done, the eagles are done. I'm just gonna take a detail brush here and go over these lines that should be gold, these uh, bits of seam, and then uh, paint this bottom of this base because I figured uh, that having that be gold would be a perfect accent for Homelander here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And at this point, we're coming along on this model pretty well. Oh, that's right, I was still gonna paint the base on there. I'll get to that in a minute. I think um, while we're sitting here and um, painting along, so to speak, I'm gonna go ahead and get a base layer onto his hair. Um, and then we'll get a base layer onto the back here. Now, as he is blonde haired, we're really not going to just paint blonde hair. It never works out like that. So what I'm gonna do is start with some honey brown that I have to basically just give a little bit of a, a base coating to it that is basically the light brown hair that uh, is kind of the underpinnings of blonde hair. And then we'll use that as the darker areas and lighten it up from there. All right, so once again, definitely not blonde here, but a pretty, pretty good start. And pretty good start on him. I mean, literally, I've been at this for... Um, maybe an hour now, maybe an hour and a half, and this is where we're at. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the next bits we're going to have is this back here. Now, depending on the Homelander model that you've chosen to print or printing your designed your own, um, the printed out one that 
the stars were already done on here and the stripes, so all you had to do is just paint it in. Um, this one, as we can see, just a blank canvas. Um, apparently, the, uh, the designer got a little tired of uh, all the pattern that he put onto the front and left the stars and stripes up to our imagination. But I've got some tips on that one, which I'm going to be sharing in uh, just a little bit. In the meantime, this definitely needs to get a good blue, and this is going to be the red and white stripes. So either way, let's go ahead and get some blue onto this so we've got less primer overall. Um, I will note, I would have usually started with getting the face done first and then put the hair on. Um, quite honestly, I've run out of anything that's close to a flesh tone and I've got more uh, coming in the mail tomorrow. So I said, you know, uh, I'm just getting too anxious. I gotta get going on this guy. He is so awesome. So uh, he, here we go <laughs> and we will just adapt. In the meantime, let's get going. So what we're gonna do is start painting the back blue. I did wanna pause and go over, uh, talk about palettes. Um, this one here uh, is, uh, you can see, is not an expensive palette. Um, it came free with uh, some uh, two bite brownies in this case. Um, just the top of the plastic lid it works great for acrylics. If you've got, uh, if you're painting in oils, which we will be in a little bit here, then any of this thick glossy cardstock that all the politicians feel compelled to send us nowadays, um, just use that. You have no need to go and buy a pallet. It's to me just a waste of money on a piece of plastic that yeah, I've already got tons of plastic. And as far as the brushes, I know a lot of people do airbrushing. I have done some airbrushing. Honest to God, I prefer hand brushing and I I figured why not show people that you can get some incredible uh, pieces done with hand brushing. And the brushes here, I picked this up, uh, a whole pack of these and sponges, all for five bucks. They are not high end. There's nothing crazy here, but it's allowing me to get in and get into the hobby and show you how to get into the hobby as well. So let's get going. Just gonna grab some of this blue and start getting it on there. Okay, a couple of things I wanted to point out on the back here. Um, first, yes, this is a rather bright blue and a rather light colored blue. Uh, definitely lighter than I should have been having for the flag. Um, but actually, I really want this to start this way. I'm going to do a couple of layers on here. I really want the feel of the cloth to kind of come through. So you'll notice that even this has uh, got some of the gray that just came through of not giving really a hard coat of that blue. And I'm good with that because then I'm going to go over with this with a uh, darker blue oil and that will again only hit spots and not hit other spots. So we'll have a very multi-level, um, at least three different colors, the base gray, some variants of the blue here and then even more variants of the blue oil on top should give a really, really realistic feel to the cloth of that, that point. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out was that you'll probably notice a seam right here. Um, that's not a glue seam. That is apparently my 3D printer had a bit of a hiccup and um, uh, skipped just a little bit there. So what we're going to do is we could have done some um, fixing up of that with modeling paste and if you haven't seen my other videos I cannot recommend enough Liquitex professional modeling paste however we're going to see if we can just power through this one with just painting and minimize that hard seam there and uh, hopefully detract your eye from it enough that you don't notice and we don't have to do any fixing of the model other than that, I think we are good to call this a, a good pause point. Oh, oh, oh sorry. The uh, last thing to note, um, this here, yeah, that was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. 
So I'll be painting over that with uh, red and white acrylic when we get to there. But for now, we're going to call this good enough that I want to give us an undo layer, as I call it. Um, also, locking in the colors. So what we're going to do is grab some matte enamel and spray this entire model down. And at that point, we can come back and uh, if we have any issues, we can take just some water, wipe it down, and it'll get it back to where we are right now. So let's go do that. Okay, at this point, what we want is to take uh, our matte enamel, and I use the Rust-Oleum matte, clear matte enamel, and basically we're just going to give the entire model a nice coat over, and not even caring about the primer, go ahead and get that too. One thing to be very careful now is do not grab anything that is wet with the matte enamel. If you do, it will come off on your fingers and most likely get you very irritated. So literally I'm just grabbing the points from the eagles. All right, that should do that. There's a couple of spots that I still am gonna have to paint over once we get to the weathering as far as down in here, for instance. But otherwise, I believe it's looking good and certainly good enough. To call this a lockdown. Okay, we will come back to this in about 10 or 15 minutes. And it'll be long enough for the enamel to dry, and we can continue on painting. At this point, we're going to uh, add a little more of a highlighting and the true blonde type of color to Highlander's hair. I've got some candlelight here, which is just a, as you can see, just kind of a an off uh, kind of a milky yellowish, I guess close to blonde. So all I want to do is really, I want to keep the depths um, pretty dark, but get anything that's high and um, at the top here covered with this. So basically just kind of lightly going over the top. And maybe a little bit of water on there gotten a little thick and we're not wanting to go heavy because we do want this to just kind of be lightly grazing the top so to speak of this and to keep some of the depths in there and you can see I'm just lightly going over this so that I'm not getting this fully into there. I really do want the multiple dimensions of color coming through. All right, so what we've got is a lot of the highlights here. We've still got a lot of the face areas and then we've got some variation on the side. We're going to let that dry and we're also going to lock that down with matte enamel and that's going to allow us to then come over and darken all of this up and make it look uh, hopefully a lot more lifelike. While we wait for the hair to dry, since we did already lock this whole thing down with matte enamel, um, I think we can go ahead and start giving some aging to the gold on here. Um, hit this uh, with the crimson that we were looking to and start giving some actual color to this that is appropriate and not this uh, nasty uh, neon blue that apparently ran quite a bit on me and I didn't realize it. So. Um, I'm thinking that when we go over with this with the oil, it's really going to bring out some, uh, some true depth to that. 
All right, so we're gonna start um, giving some aging and uh, weathering to the eagles here. You know, they've got uh, that nice gold, but they really need a little bit of something to make them a little more realistic. So I'm taking some burnt umber water-based oil here and just getting a little on my brush. I don't know if you're able to see, basically wanted to just kind of leave a hint of the color there. And now I'm just gonna kind of go over the entire eagle. But especially getting this worked into the cracks and crevices. All right, and so let's compare. Just gold, gold with burnt umber. I'm gonna take and wipe just a little bit of this excess off. And again, I think you can see that there is just a, just a greater feel of this being really a gold eagle as versus this. So we're gonna continue that on the other side and then we'll do the same for his collar. And there we go. Two eagles done. And let's get that uh, collar aged up here. And we're done with that. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take a little detailed brush here and force a little bit into some of the uh, areas I wasn't able to hit, but because right under the where these two panels meet, obviously there's gonna be a little more buildup. And same over here. And just kind of helps add shadowing and helps you realize this is uh, sticking out a little bit. Sometimes even though we are dealing with three-dimensional objects here, giving the hint of a shadow, even when there clearly should be some natural shadowing happening, it just it really helps. So I think we're ready to, you know, we'll hold off on the crimson. Let's get this back here because this has been bugging me. So, one moment while I swap paint. All right, I've got some cobalt blue here, which I think is gonna be the right color blue for the American flag there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. And again, I'm using a water-based oil, even though this has got some really nasty looks into it. Um, I really want to uh, just kind of cover it up with the oil there, but not paint completely over it in the concept of an acrylic. I don't want the uh, color to completely go away. I actually want to keep most of it there. But just adding a whole lot of this cobalt blue on top of it. And so now we can see there's a lot of variation between dark blue, light blue, some of that neon blue still coming through as it was, um, some of being just really the heavy cobalt blue that we're going over. And that's good. We want this to be a, a whole lot of variations between those two. So I think we're going to call that a, a good spot. And let's see... Yeah, we might as well just do those crimson bits and lock this all down. All right, for this bit here, this is one of those interesting things where in the comics, it is very clearly gold. In the TV show, it is very clearly red. And I'm going to go halfway happy. I'm going to make it red and gold at the same time. I'm taking some crimson oil. Just a little smidge there. 
you know, a little detail brush. Matter of fact, I'm going to put my magnifiers on. And we're just wanting to hopefully not touch anything important. Take this crimson oil and go over just the gold. And so what that's gonna do is still give some of that gold feel, but clearly be a red color. All right. I believe that it is ready for us to lock it down with matte enamel again. All right, this is going to lock it down with our Rust-Oleum clear matte enamel. And again, this is going to lock all the colors in that are in and then allow us to have an undo layer if we need to. Most importantly for now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to come back over that hair and hit it with some oil to really bring the right color out. And I can't do that with it having the acrylic there because otherwise I'm likely to have the water wet out the acrylic and then have it do bad things like mixed colors and whatnot. And I don't want that. I want it to stay as it is and layer over it. And the easiest way to layer over it is to hit it with matte enamel and then layer over it. So as usual, Amazon was right on time today and I got some uh, flush colored paints in. I'm gonna be using Sunkissed Peach for uh, Homelander skin. And um, we're just gonna start getting that on there so that we can not have any gray left on them and be able to go from there. Um, while I'm talking about Amazon, I should note, if you go to ponyboypopart.com slash Amazon, you'll see that uh, all the products that I use, not the specific paints um, per se, but the, um, the products like the Rust-Oleum Matte Enamel or the um, Epoxy when I get to gluing things together, um, resin, et cetera, et cetera. You can find them all there, nice quick links. So you know, rather than going and saying, oh, you was mentioning this uh, Liquitex, I think, for is this the right modeling paste or whatnot? Uh, it's all right there. Just go ahead and click a link and you can uh, start your shopping cart right there. So, uh, oh, if you do go there and you don't see anything on the page other than some headings, uh, turn off your ad blocker. Um, I am using Amazon um, for uh, their product that links and it looks like ads the way it's done. They're not ads. Just Turn off the ad blocker for this page. But again, Amazon did awesome by me and got the paint in today like I was hoping so I could just pick up exactly where I left off of starting to get some skin on this guy. All right, we're gonna let that dry and uh, see how it is and then hit it with a coat of matte enamel and then we'll go from there okay while we're waiting for the face to dry i figure i want to do one little more bit on the hair that is i'm just grabbing a spot of titanium white and that was way more than i needed really just needed a spot and you do have to make sure your brush is very clean when you're dealing with white just gonna grab a little bit and what I'm wanting to do is just add a couple of little highlights to his hair just kind of picking up at the very top of a couple little glint areas basically And I am keeping this right, basically I'm laying my brush across sideways so I'm guaranteed to only scratch 
the very top. I don't want to get into any depth at all. So you need those ones to stay deep and dark when they're in the shadows. I think that's enough. Really only wanted a little bit. Again, just enough to uh, kind of catch the glints there. Okay, like I said, we're gonna take this over, spray it down with some matte enamel, and um, then come back and uh, see if we can get him finished up on the hair. All right, at this point, we just want to spray down the matte enamel on the face to get that base layer locked in there. It's a little splotchy at this point, I'm not really thrilled with this new paint, but um, we'll uh, once it gets covered here then we'll go over and do a second layer and it should uh, look a lot better at that point and also this lock-in will get those highlights in his hair locked I think I already covered his hair the last time I did a lock-in on the back but you're safe than sorry. All right, we're gonna let that sit and come back to it in about 10 minutes. Okay, once again, we're gonna start on uh, working on the hair at this point. So I'm gonna go flip around to the back and just pick a spot that we're not uh, right out in the open and just do some experimenting with. Taking some burnt umber water-based oil, that is this stuff here again just like we used earlier to weather up that gold. And what I want to do is see if we can get this to look a little more like the darker spots on his hair. And I was just kind of pointing randomly at a monitor that is off, screen, off camera. And that is where I've got reference image of Homelander up so I can be taking a look at what I'm doing while I'm doing it. This is already looking, not that, but some of this is already looking the way I wanted it, so I'm just going to carry it forward and keep spreading that out. And basically what I'm going to be doing is, is really getting this into the deep parts. It's going to look a lot darker than we want it to look. That's okay. We're going to come back and fix that in a minute. I am painting this kind of against the grain, so to speak, of the hair. Well, really with it, but uh, going backwards up, kind of like the way you would not pet, pet a cat because it'll get mad at you. And the reason is, is I really want this to get deep down into the, the darker crevice areas. And that'll become clear in just a minute of why. I'm also taking special care to really hit it hard at the roots here. Even though Homelander is a blonde, if you look, he really has very dark roots. I'm not saying that Homelander dyes his hair. And I'm just saying that he has very dark roots. Okay, that is what I was hoping it would look like, which I know does not look like blonde hair at all, right? Let's see if we can change that. Just gonna take a piece of paper towel here. And let's see what a magic wipe can do. I'm 
That is pretty close to what I wanted. Maybe still a little darker. And some points a little brighter. But overall, I'm kind of okay with that. Just brushing a little bit of burnt umber back on to because I did wipe off really hard off the top there. And then just gonna wipe a little bit again. Not much. I want to keep some of that brightness of those highlights. I'm liking that. I think we're gonna call that good enough for the hair. Now, like I said, wasn't real happy with that first layer of uh, coat of paint on the face. I'm just gonna give him a little bit of touch up on that. Okay, at this point, we're gonna take this over and lock it down with matte enamel. Okay. Now we're going to give his hair and face another coat of matte enamel. sit for about 15 minutes. I realize since I've got the burnt umber out and that's done such a good job on making his hair look like this, I'm just going to take uh, this uh, brush here, it's just got a fine area on it, I'm just going to lightly go over where his eyebrows are. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. And since I've got that titanium white, I might as well light out his eyes here. Now, truthfully, I haven't decided if I'm gonna ha have him using laser eyes or if I'm gonna have him in his normal a human eye form yet. We'll see. All right. I know this seems a little crazy, but I'm going to spray this down with matte enamel again because I really like how the eyebrows came out. I want to lock those exactly as they are and might as well lock the uh, white of his eyes at this point. Okay, we're going to uh, start working on the skin tones at this point. And basically what we wanna do is make this more realistic. And the way we're going to do that is by what, using what I call the sideshow method. And that is because I've picked it up off of watching a couple of the uh, sideshow videos, how to paint Superman and how to paint Harley Quinn. Both are amazing. And uh, they both go over the same technique, which is to give a couple of washes over the skin and so what we want to do is just take a very very little bit of yellow and I've got actually way more than I need here and we really want to get it watered down so that it's really thinned out and uh, then we're just literally going to wash over everything that is flesh and then dab that back off and uh, what that's going to do is give a yellowed, well, you'll see. At first, it's going to look really weird because why are you painting his whole face yellow? And 
this is called a wash. We're going to wipe it all back off, but we do want to get it in there really well. So we're just painting over, again, everything that is his skin. Okay, that looks like there's yellow everywhere. Now I'm just going to take a clean paper towel and blot that yellow off. Could use a sponge. I've only been so-so with the sponge. It just doesn't seem to really pick things up. Maybe it's just that I've got a bad sponge, but I just, I like paper towel. I've got a bunch of it around. Now we definitely do not want to leave actual bits of yellow, but you will notice that his skin has taken on more of a suntanned feel to it. And that is the yellow itself. Okay, I'm gonna take this over, lock it down with man enamel, and um, I believe you'll see and agree that yeah, this is a little more natural looking skin. And we've still got some uh, bit to go, but it's getting closer. Okay, at this point, we've let it dry, and we're now going to take some uh, simple blue and go back over, do the same concept. I'm gonna, instead of doing this whole face, I'm gonna focus more on some of the lower areas here. And that was a little shout out to my son for pointing out the different zones of color. And this is more of a blue zone, so to speak, if I got that right. And once again, now that I've got it on, I go and dab back off. So what's happening here is, is this is going to set into the, the creases, plus also it's just giving a, uh, a light color of the blue over these areas. And that just kind of helps give the feeling of your veins and whatnot. And there we go. So once again, I'm gonna take this over, spray it down with matte enamel, and we'll come back for the red. And the last one that we're gonna do is take a little primary red, and again, thin that out a lot. and then focus on the red zones, which are really all of his cheeks, his ears. All right, and then once again, taking our paper towel and blotting off. So now we have a lot of variants of yellow, blue, and red in the face. Maybe a little over intense. I think that I'll go over it one more time with just a flat then skin wash to see if we can tone this all back down a little bit. But um, overall, certainly it is not the same flat monochrome color of the skin that it was before. Um, so let's see if we can uh, make it come back a little bit more lifelike. But I do say, um, I think that it's going to go well. So we're going to lock this down with matte enamel. While we've got a little bit of time on our hands, uh, waiting for the mat to dry on his face, I figured I'd just turn around and very carefully um, start working on the back here. We have still got to wrap up this flag and we really haven't even started. So I'm just going to take some titanium white 
and start giving the entire base here uh, of the stripes. I've already got the base for the stars area ready, the field of stars, but still got to get our stripe area ready. So why not now? So it's just doing some titanium white over everything. I think that's looking pretty good. It is going to be interesting to figure out how to get the uh, stripes to line up nicely on those folds. So that'll be a little bit of a challenge, but um, we'll burn that bridge when we cross it, right? So in the meantime, I am going to take a pause and we'll, we'll, we'll come back. All right, um, now that the front is dried up, I just want to take a little bit of our sun-kissed peach and go back over and do a quick wash over things that just when they looked a little too intense, see if we can tone them back just a little bit. And once again with our paper towel. All right, at this point, I'm really happy with how his face is looking here. Um, I do want to just add a little bit of more shading to it to uh, um, just help round it out a little bit. So I just grabbed a little bit of the burnt umber oil and again, doing a dry brushing technique here and really just kind of focus on the sh shadow areas. So behind his jawline, under his chin, go just a little bit to help accent those cheekbones there. And then we're also going to go behind the ears and get that back to looking like there's hair back there. Now again, just gonna take a little bit of paper towel and rub that down a bit. And I'm gonna take and go back up around the hairline and just make sure that's got some darkness and depth to it. I also noticed that under his eyebrows should be a little darker, just from natural shadowing. And that wasn't really the case there, so I'm gonna help it along. That's a lot better. Maybe just a little wipe down there, but not much. All right. I'm really liking how that's coming out there. So, one more thing I just realized is on his face is his lips are very, 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 very pale. So again, I'm going to just take just a dot of pink and really water it down again, just like we did with the other washes and just very gently going over his lips.
Now we don't want them wearing lipstick. So we're again, just gonna dot that down. I think it just gives a nice pink gloss to his lips there without looking like he's got lipstick on. All right, now we can take this and lock this down and call that good. At this point, we've got um, this back that we still haven't finished out and dealt with, so I figured now's how time to do that. What I'm doing is, because we have to do our stars and stripes manually, the stars, I'm gonna come back with a technique on that one, but the stripes, I'm really just gonna do kind of um, by eye, really. So I'm just going to take a little bit of red here and kind of give myself uh, some mental notes. This is going to be red stripe and white. And if that's up there, coming down, then probably the next red one is red, white. Oh, yeah, there. And then that ends. Reds, one, two, three, four. Now that we've got our markers, let's do the simple ones. This is gonna go straight down and follow that line. Do you want to follow the curves of the fabric? And if you really want to do this right, you would take a ruler or something and measure this out. But I don't think anyone's going to be looking that close and say, oh, that, that stripe was a little wider than the other stripe. I'm hoping not. So if they are, the best I'm going to be able to say is, yep, you're right. And hopefully it still looks cool, all right? <laughs> okay, now that we have those painted in, let's fill them in. There we go. Got a little red dot there, but um, other than that, we got the red and white stripes. So now, just gonna kind of replicate that on this side. And what I'm gonna do is kind of cheat, bring this from the back to the bottom. At that point, I know where to go ahead and bring it around to the inside of the front. Well, probably some of you are going to ask, who's really going to see that? Maybe no one, but maybe someone. And because maybe someone, we paint it. Okay. Well, that wasn't that painful. Okay, so we've got a couple of uh, little gaffes with our um, red and white stripes, but overall they're close enough that I want to get these locked in so that I can then go over and fix the white areas without um, worrying about uh, having paint ups like I did here where I tried to touch up and all I did is smear the red oil. And I should have known better, but you know, we forget, we get excited. So. Taking clear matte enamel and just gonna give quick spray to this area that we've done here. Remembering we did do the inside there. At this point we wanna add a little uh, um, grime and dirt into uh, 
our Homelander model. So what we're going to do is grab some black water-based oil and much like we've done with our burnt umber, we're just going to take a brush and get some on there, get a lot of it back off. And then just going to kind of brush it into some of the uh, areas, especially like seam lines and that type of thing, where we really want to help emphasize the contrast in color or emphasize the crease or shadow or anything like that. Now is a good time if you had any overpaints with where you accidentally got gold onto Homelander's blue. Go ahead and rub the black into that so it'll paint over that gold. And it's okay to go heavy. We're going to wipe a lot of this back off. Because this is water-based oil, we don't have to rush. It will just sit there and wait for us, basically. I'm trying not to go too much into the main gold areas itself. We've already got that nice burnt umber age into the... Uh, the main parts of the gold. I do like how that sits. So I'm not really trying to get that part of the gold too much deeper. Maybe a little bit like the eyes. But and then I'm just going to kind of give a light pass over all of his chest. Again, not heavy. Just a bit of a light pass. This is just going to help, help add some depth into a little bit of those areas. Okay, now that we have a lot of black into a lot of the different areas, I'm just going to take a clean piece of paper towel and like we've done before, just kind of wipe a lot of that back off. It's got a nice uh, variation of tones in there, a little bit of the uh, darkening out from the black, so it just kind of gives a little more uh, depth and realism to this and not this flat uh, metallic blue. So, we will be doing that again on the back here, but we still need to get those stars in place. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. Just remember from yesterday, we did uh, take a pause and had the red and white stripes on the back, but we had a couple of little over paints where we had the red go a little too deep. So just gonna take a little white acrylic and a bit of a detail brush. And we're just gonna fix some of those lines while we're sitting here. If you felt that any of the red lines were a little too thick, now's a good time to just kind of go over and spread those out with the white. And if there are any lines that were not crisp, now's the time to make them crisp. Okay, so let's do a quick recap here. Um, obviously, we still have to do the stars. And we still have to do his eyes. I think that's pretty much where we're sitting. The last thing will be is uh, if you're wanting to take it to the PG-13 version that I'll be doing, which is to add some gore, then um, we will also be doing that. Otherwise, you'll be able to say, nope, I'm good, and stop after this. So, let's take a moment and work on uh, getting those stars. I do like to save the eyes for the last because uh, they're usually a bit of a pain in the butt. So, um, I'm going to do that again. Alright, at this point we're going to work on the field of stars that should be going here. 
Again, on some models, uh, they may have those actually embossed out so that you can just uh, paint those out. In this case, the uh, model designers left it up to us. And uh, we're gonna cheat. So uh, take a moment and go to my website, ponyboypopart.com slash Amazon, ponyboypopart.com slash Amazon. And what you'll do is uh, scroll down to the assembly portion and you're gonna see the links to this right here, premium water slide paper. Uh, this is for a inkjet printer and it is specifically transparent. Those are keywords that you really need to pay attention to. If you have a laser jet or especially a color laser jet, then great, go for the laser jet printer. Uh, it actually saves a step in that the laser jet, you do not have to worry about the ink running. Um, we're gonna cover that because I use an inkjet and so um, the color inkjet paper, we do have to handle a little bit separately. I'll make a note of that later. But what I've done is found an image of the American flag and took the square bit of the stars, uh, the field of stars, and then said, okay, measure out on this model. How big is this? And this is about five inches. I bumped it up to five and a half inches wide and say a little over three and three and a half inches tall, which I allowed it to auto size. I grabbed that American flag took just the stars and I inversed them so that the stars were black and the background, and I just whited it out. Then printed that exactly to that size. So the five and a half inches wide by a little over three. I took some uh, scissors and cut out what that printed, but that was this was a square or you know, of course rectangle on a eight by 10 piece of paper or in this case a4 which is a little bit bigger and then cut around the areas that we're going to make here and what you see is this is going to just lay fairly flat i still want to cut a little more but i wanted to pause and give you the idea of what we're going to do so what you'll want is literally to get these you don't have to worry too much about getting it exact because obviously there's going to be some uh, overlap, but um, we do want to try and get as much of the clear material out and to follow this line and the cut of this fabric here. So we want this to match right over that and really we'll start from the bottom, work our way up and then just cut what we don't need. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this. I'm going to pause. You won't notice anything other than. And just like that, we have a nicely formed star field for the man of honor here. So what we're going to do now is take this over. And this is a step that if you have an inkjet printer, an inkjet paper, you have to do this step. That is to lock this down with matte enamel before we put it into the water. If you have a laser jets printer and a laser jet paper, skip this step. Once again, we're gonna get a can of Rust-Oleum matte clear enamel and very lightly giving very light coats to this. I don't want to go very heavy. I definitely don't want this to run at all because it will get the um, ink on there to run. So basically just a light pass and then I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to do another light pass, let that dry, and then one more light pass because again, I really don't want to have this run and it's, it's just a little bit of a matte enamel. So, as a matter of fact, it's already a little bit. I'm going to just do another light pass there and then uh, do one more. And then this will be ready for us to dunk into the water. While we're waiting for the matte enamel on the decal to dry, we're going to get um, just a wide, flat container. This has to be basically big enough to hold our, um, our decal. And I think that's going to be. 
and just a little bit of water not much literally just enough to coat the uh, the bottom and you know, give the uh, paper something to sit in and uh, let you push it down and get it under there if you've ever uh, dealt with models when you're younger and had uh, decals where you could put them onto the model and uh, make it the model look that much more awesome and um, you put those onto water that's exactly what we're dealing with here and again that is called water slide paper okay the matte enamel is dried and um, we're ready to get started so again what we're going to do is do you want to be careful that you have clean fingers put the paper into the water it's going to want to curl up you need to force it down and have it soak for literally just like five or ten seconds and you'll feel the paper is flattening out and getting used to the fact of being wet and we want to wait just a little bit longer so we don't want this to still be stuck or tear or anything like that so basically just kind of helping uh, Make sure that the entire bottom is fully soaked wet. All right, I think that's going to be enough. Let's take it out and just see if we can get it to start to slide off of the paper. Nope, not yet. So we'll soak for just a little bit longer here. So it's definitely starting to come off. Now let's, there we go. Once you can see that you're sliding up off the paper, we can get our water out of the way here. Bring our model into place and just lay this up where we want it to sit. And Hold down on the top and just pull the paper out from underneath. Now before you go too far, make sure it's laying flat. You may need to adjust like I do. So let's take that time and just scoot it over a little. Curl up, but got that taken care of. Okay, now this is coming along nice. Let's just get it to lay down flat here. All right, so. I'm going to stretch this out and try not to rip anywhere. See there's a couple of areas that I've got it that folded up on itself a little. But I do have to ask, honestly, who would want to freehand these stars when you can simply paint them in at this point? Because these look awesome. Just going to try and smooth out any air bubbles or wrinkles. So now I'm just going to grab some white acrylic paint and start painting in these stars.
two, two, uh, uh, uh. And without question, that's better than I could have ever imagined doing that by freehanding. And I don't think anyone would look at that and guess that that was a decal, which it was. So what we're going to do now is, if you guessed spray it down with matte enamel, you're right. We gotta lock this down and be able to make that um, Maybe just a little bit of touch-ups with uh, some blue to go over a little bit of the white bleeds, but really that's going to be about it for that. And then eyes, and the last bit will be taking this to a PG-13 rating. So let's go lock this down. Once again, got matte clear enamel, and we're just going to focus on the stars. And now that it's got a little coat, I'm going to let that dry, and we'll come back in about 10-15 minutes. So at this point, we're pretty happy with how the stars are looking here. Um, definitely the star field that I wanted, and the very crisp, clean uh, organization that we needed to have on the star field here. The only thing that um, I'm not real happy with is that I've got uh, not perfect forms and some overruns and you know, basically I wasn't able to be exact with the stars and we're going to fix that. And the way we're going to do that is to just grab some of the cobalt blue oil that we had used earlier to give that background blue and we're just going to go back over now and do some touch ups on these stars. I'm going to give you a little example, like right here. And what I want to do is try and draw some crisp, clean lines on them. And make it more to points. Nice thing about this is since we're using the oil, we're not happy with how we've done something. It's just a quick wipe. Whereas with the acrylic, it's it's pretty uh, hard and intense on there. And so that star now has got the rounded corners removed and it's a crisper, more clean star. And I'm just gonna pick a couple others and keep going with that concept. So you'll notice I just biffed this star right here and completely went over one whole prong with the blue. So I'm going to take a small bit of paper towel and just wipe over the entire area accidentally. Don't do what I did. Oh. And just uh, rub well, I'm just going to rub everything off of that star and start all over again. At the very least. At the worst, it'll be a little dirtied up, but it's no longer completely covered, and I can restart. Sorry about that battery failure. Um, just a quick pickup here. Uh, this is where I'm at after having retouched everything with the blue and bringing out all those sharp points back to the stars. A uh, little of them are still, you know, slightly wonky or whatever, but um, your eye doesn't jump to them. It sees all those nice fine points and immediately writes it off of, oh, the stars and stripes, look at that. And that's all I wanted to accomplish. So I'm going to take this, spray it down with uh, matte enamel lock in all those colors again and um, charge up my battery before I uh, start the next set. Okay, the last thing we're going to do uh, in the G version of this model 
is to paint his eyes, and at that point, if, uh, if that's where you're going, then that's where you'll stop. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're going to then go and add some gore to him because I just, I prefer the PG-13 version of him. But for right now, we do have to add his eyes. We've just got a little bit of white in there to get a placeholder. Uh, that was from earlier on, uh, but that was just taking some titanium white oil, and I'm actually going to redo that just to get another little base layer on there. And then I've got some blue oil that we're going to use for his eyes, you know, the, uh, the color of his iris, and some black oil just for some additional accenting on there. Um, got a gr uh, brand new palette because, of course, it's free. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to grab a little bit of, uh, yep, uh, nope, a little more detail than that. So we are going to have to go pretty tight here and just add another base layer of white on here. And even that was humongously more than we're going to I do apologize if I end up getting uh, him pulled in out of frame because this is pretty detailed work, so I'm going to have to get very close up to him. But basically what I'm going to, to do is take a little bit of this uh, white oil and basically just... There we go. Whiten his eyes up a little bit. White eyes. Now, what we're looking for is a circle of blue. So I'm going to do a little test here. Let's see which of these are going to be the best brush to use. Oh, that was an insane amount of blue. Oh, sorry about the fan in the background. I need to replace the fan on my Ender printer. I'm kind of liking the feel of that. Okay, so just took a brush here and was playing with it. What I found was is that if I just kind of do a light tapping in the area, once I've got a lot of the material off, well it did start, and I'm glad I'm doing this again here, it started to leave the uh, little brush strokes which are the little bits that will pop out and look like they're the uh, iris. Well, you'll see later. Okay, so I'm just going to get a little bit of ink on the brush there. Ink? Yeah, paint on the brush. And then just lightly dab. So right now he's a little cross-eyed. We're going to fix that by lightly dabbing a little bit more. All right, and then we'll come back and add white to bring it back to a circle that is in line with the other eye. Not bad, I think. So let's take a little bit of black. Trying to go a little. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to take just my dot here. And so what I've been uh, doing off camera here is dotting his eyes, literally. 
And now I'm taking the black and just doing a very, very, very light outline of the blue iris. Trying to make sure I don't get a whole bunch of black on there. Now I'm taking the black and I'm going on the underside of his eyelids and eyebrows because there was white there and blue and a couple of overpaints so just kind of darkening that out and that will help because it's supposed to be in shadow anyway so that really helps actually give the shadowing or shading and shadow to it. So now that we've got that sprayed down with matte enamel, we uh, really need to glisten up his eyes because you know they shouldn't be dry looking like that. And the way we're going to do that is with Duracloss, Dura, sorry, Duraclear gloss varnish, and um, you can find that on the Amazon link at PonyBoyPopArt.com/Amazon. And what this is is just a paint-on gloss that uh, allows us to and we don't really need much at all because it's just going over his eyes. It allows us to uh, give us a, a glossy look. As a matter of fact, I think we'll just wet his lips a little bit as well. So what we're going to do is just get a little bit on our brush here. Paint over his eyes. It should come out kind of a purple look. Do not be alarmed. That is the way it's supposed to look. And we just leave that until it dries. I'm gonna take a little bit more and just do a quick pass over his lips. Take a little of the excess off. All right. That was that. Now we need to clear our brush off. And we are good to go. So, if you are done doing the G version of this model, you can stop. If you are looking to take this to a gorier level, well then keep watching. All right, so, if you've been watching the boys, you know that there are a couple of scenes where Homelander is just not the uh, the Boy Scout that the Superman is, uh, his role, his character was kind of loosely based off of is anywhere like. Um, so the uh, thing that we want to show here is he's not afraid to get a little blood on his hands or all over his suit, his face. Who knows? Who cares? He doesn't. So um, what we're going to do is gore him up, and what I was thinking is uh, imagining that he has uh, taken his laser vision and sliced through some people. So what I want to do is have some very, very, very clear slice lines, um, and I'm not sure if they're going to go this way or this way, but basically I want it to go at a nice angle. With, you know, of course, some random splurts, but really the, the primary bit being clear that he's just used his laser vision and now he's surveying the scene afterwards with his happy little smirk. Um, the thing is, is I don't want to get any blood in his eyes. I want them to be very nice and clean. Even uh, want to go and exaggerate that and make sure that no blood gets into here because, again, I just, I really want that to be clear that his... His eyes are perfectly attuned and looking at what is going on in the scene here. So I'm just going to take a little bit of painter's tape and that dirt gloss is still on there in the drying. So I'm going to go over it very light and loose, not hitting the eyes themselves and do the same on this bit. 
So we've just got some protective bits here. And at that point, you know, if I, if I don't get any blood in those areas, that's not gonna bother me and his eyes are gonna be clear. So now let's go and have fun. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna get some crimson oil and also some cadmium red oil and we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a playground. So be right back. All right, at this point I have a long, thin paired brush and I'm going to use this for a um, variation of what I call the smack splatter technique. And this is really going to be a, a flicking technique. So what I'm going to do is take a uh, stick here, which you can see I've already been using, and this brush going to dip it into dip the brush into some cadmium red oil, uh, water based oil and get it pretty well uh, filled up there sorry I have to be on screen and then I'm going to spray this down with some just straight water and loosen that oil up and now we're going to go and just kind of do a couple of flicks on it As you can see, I'm trying to go back and forth in the same pattern here. And I'm going to switch over and grab some crimson oil and wet it down. And do the same thing. Now I'm going to switch over because we really want to get some decent sized droplets in here. And I'm going to pull out this brush. And again, going to pack it full of red. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to also mix in some crimson right into this one. And we will spray this down with water to thin it out. And then once again, come back and hit it back up. I think that that is going to be a pretty good representation of what I wanted. Maybe it's a little thick over here and a little light over here, but you know what? That kind of helps give that feeling that it was really primarily coming from this side. And I'm all right with that. So we're going to uh, let this dry for a little bit here. Then I'm going to take the tape off and we're going to spray it down with matte enamel. No, I'm not going to take the tape off yet. If I sprayed it down with matte enamel right now, that would overrate the gloss that I just put on his eyes. So we're going to let this dry and we're going to spray this down. Then we'll take the tape off his eyes. Meantime, I'm going to clean off my brush. And then clean off my hands and my face. So my wife doesn't ask, why do I have blood all over my face? She has been concerned about me before. Turned out I was just painting Deadpool. All right, we're actually gonna do two parts of enamel here. We're going to start with our matte enamel and cover everything, but I really don't wanna lose the gloss of all the uh, speckles of paint in there. 
So what we're also going to do is, is once the matte enamel is dried, I'm going to take some satin enamel and just give a couple of light little bursts into the blood areas and hopefully it'll be diffuse enough that it'll seem like it's the blood that's glistening and um, that'll uh, help give that feeling that the rest is flat and the blood is truly uh, still wet. Okay, we're now going to take, I'm just going to, I really want to focus just on this bit here. So I'm going to take some satin enamel. And just a small burst. We're going to call that good. And now we're going to take his tape off. And that is exactly what I was hoping for. And there you go. The real hero, AKA Homelander. Printed in PLA spray painted for his uniform and hand painted in acrylics and oils with a little PG-13 for extra effect. So I hope you had fun, maybe learned a few things. As always, if you printed this piece, tag us and let us know in the comments. Take care.